Hi folks, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be reviewing a new pair of binoculars. I started my research a few months ago and wanted something specifically for rifle hunting. And I was looking for a pair of premium top of the line binoculars with lots of features. Again, not just good, but a premium product. Well, in my search I found three models that made my short list. Those were the Swarovski EL 10x42 rangefinder binoculars the Zeiss RF 10x45 rangefinder binoculars and the ones that you see here on the table the Leica Geovid HDB 10x42 rangefinder binoculars so what I did was I headed to Cabela's I did a side-by-side -side comparison and these were the ones I selected they were not inexpensive they did run away with my card but uh, in my opinion they were the right choice for me again they were the right choice for me but before I created my short list, I looked at many other models, Vortex, Steiner, Canon, Nikon, Leupold, Bushnell, you name it, but I'm sorry to say these models did not make my short list. I also don't have anything negative to say about Swarovski or Zeiss. I was basically comparing apples to apples. The clarity on all three models was phenomenal, just ultra clear lenses. I actually own a pair of Swarovskis and have for many, many years. This is a pair of ELs here, but these don't have the range finding capabilities built in. That's what I was looking for. By the way, these aren't going anywhere. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll break down this pair here. I'll talk about the pros and cons, and then I'll do a wrap up at the end. They do come with lens covers on the front, as you can see. This is the range finder in the front here. You have an activation button for the range finder. You have another button for your selection and your different options. This is the focus wheel. If we flip them over, we have your diopter setting on the back here. We also have another setting on this side that is for the focusing of the reticle that's contained in the unit. So if you want to sharpen it up, you can do that. These are 10 power and with a 42 millimeter lens. They do come with covers on top for the eyepieces. The top one has a little slit here so you can weave it through the uh, strap so you don't lose them. And I'll set these aside. And since we're talking about the strap, this is the strap. In my opinion, it, it is a little bit thin and you do feel it around the neck after about an hour or so. The solution for that is to use a shoulder harness to distribute the weight over your shoulders and keep them from flopping around. This is the pair from my uh, other binoculars that I can use and actually this is a better option. This is the case it came with. It's a padded case. It's nice. It does have a little slot here for batteries and extra uh, micro SD cards has D-rings on the sides for the strap, loop in the back, a belt loop. I don't know who would wear this on their belt, but you could if you wanted to. The binoculars do get stuck in there, I will say that. If you have these eye covers on, they get caught up and they're very difficult to extract. Getting back to the binoculars, they have these eye pieces which are phenomenal. They have five adjustment points. So if you wear glasses, no problem. If you don't wear glasses, again, no problem. But you'd simply turn them, find a sweet spot, and you're done. They come with this micro SD card. And this is really the game changer here. This is what made uh, this pair of binoculars superior over the other two that I looked at. A pair of tweezers. I'll talk about those in a second. And, of course, an instructional manual. They have 20 millimeter eye relief. They are 34.7 ounces, and I believe that converts over to 983 grams, if I'm correct there. They are submergible underwater for 5 meters or 16.5 feet. This is the battery compartment down here. It also contains the micro SD card, and I'm actually going to open it up because I think it's relevant to the review and 
I'll show you that the cap does contain a little tiny o-ring to keep the, any moisture from getting in there. It takes a CR2, not a CR123, but a CR2, a little camera battery. So you can see right there. Set that aside and if you look closely all the way in the back there, let me give you a close-up shot there's the micro SD card because I already have these programmed and that's why they give you the tweezers because if you have sausage fingers it's going to be very difficult to get in there so that's where it's contained I believe that they correctly consolidated both the battery and the micro SD card in this waterproof compartment I think that was really smart getting back to the binos if I didn't mention it they are good to 18,000 feet minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit for the electronics inside and 131 degrees they're actually good for minus 22 just the uh, the binoculars this is called a Perger Poro Prism design and what it is it's a blend between a roof prism and a Poro Prism to give you the best of both worlds magnesium housing the body it has a rubber armor coating which feels nice in the hand I will say that I did like the the, uh, the grip on the Swarovski's better because it had the thumb grooves in the back, but this is nothing to sneeze at. Very solid construction. Anyway, let's talk about the micro SD card because this is really relevant to the discussion. So what you have here is a micro SD card that would go inside this adapter. You would insert the adapter into your computer and you would go to the Leica website go to their ballistics calculator and there you would start making selections your caliber the manufacturer the type of bullet that you're going to be using specifically the grain 270 whatever you select and your zero range and then you're going to download that data onto this card you will extract the card from the adapter place it into your binoculars and you are basically done with step one now I will tell you this is a multi-step process it's not one two three then what you would do is you're going to carefully read pages 40 through 46 in the instructional manual that, it com that comes with the binoculars and you're going to start making your selections there the trajectory tables can be found at the rear of the booklet you're going to go there and they have the, the, uh, the curve angles for the bullet they're in US uh, settings and European settings and you're also going to find your zero range there mine is 100 yards that's the one I selected selected specifically I selected US 4 because that was the closest match to my bullet and that can be found on page 215 so basically what I'm saying here folks this is going to take time it works better if you have two people because one person can read the instructions off while the other person can look through the binos as you uh, select your uh, program settings. Take your time. This is not a one, two, three step. Once you've completed that, then I would recommend that you're going to go to the range and you're going to do confirmation and verification of your impact points. Now, let's talk about the advanced ballistic system that's contained within, this, uh, within this, these binoculars. This system is designed to provide you with a point, a corrected point of impact that's another thing that really made these uh, shine over the other binoculars so what do these give you well they give you the temperature they're going to give you the barometric pressure but more importantly they're going to give you the angle of inclination so if you're hunting out west or if you're hunting in the mountains no problem in short the only thing you have to worry about is the wind these binoculars will work with a standard plex reticle they will work um, as, as far as doing a traditional holdover if that's what you want to do you can use them with a BRH or a BDC a bullet drop compensator or a bullet drop compensating reticle or a ballistic turret and what I mean by that is let me move these back if you have a reticle that looks like this no problem if you have just a standard plex reticle no problem and if you have a ballistic turret they're also going to work with that. So let's talk a little bit more about their range. They do go out to 2000, at least that's what the specs say. They're up close ranging. Their up close ranging is 10 yards. Their up close 
focus is 5 meters or 16.5 feet. Let's transition now and talk a little bit about some of the cons associated with this unit. A minor con is that the, uh, they are a bit tight in the case. I previously mentioned that. They're, they're a little difficult to extract, but no problem if you remove the covers. Also, although that you can range out to 2,000 yards, the corrected ballistic values only go out to 875 yards. Now, if you use the custom settings, you can get corrected ballistic values all the way out to 1,000 yards. Now, I will say that this is well, well beyond my range, so if something's that far, we're either going to be closing the distance or we're going to head back to camp for soup and sandwiches. These binoculars are specifically designed for rifle hunting, and they are uh, expensive, I will say that. So if you're not a rifle hunter, or more importantly, if you're not a diehard rifle hunter, they may not be the best choice for you given the hefty price tag and the level of sophistication. In addition, the programming process is not one, two, three. It does require careful reading and taking your time. Again, this is a precise instrument, and in my opinion, you should take your time, take it to the range, verify and confirm uh, your corrected impact points. They are a bit heavy for neck carry, but no problem if you're using a shoulder harness. So to wrap up, I will say that the Leica GeoVids can be customized for your caliber. They can be customized for your bullet type. They can be customized for the various reticles. They will give you the atmospherics. They will give you the angle of incline. They will give you the angle of decline. They also offer scan mode for moving game. The light gathering properties are some of the best I've seen. They perform very, very well in low light conditions. And for those of you who hunt, you know that a lot of stuff happens in that first and last half hour of the hunt. They are waterproof. They are fog proof. They're built like a tank. They are tr truly professional grade binoculars. In fact, they have been advertised as being the world's best hunting binoculars. Now, I don't know if that's true, but they're damn close, that's for sure. So there you have it. This concludes my presentation. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.